Hi, this is Jay Fleming, the senior developer with Lulea Media and the author of the Child Theme Configurator. So what I've got here is 2016, and you'll notice I've got a test site set up. I'm using the test data for the beta test suite, and I've got a menu set up here. It's using you know a menu of four pages. I have a widget uh, set up here with just the search box, and you can see it's just using the default style sheet that comes with 2016. So we're gonna go over here to tools and then child themes. The main parent child page has changed if you're familiar with child theme configurator. We now have numbered sections to sort of guide you through the process of setting up your child themes. When you first load the plugin for the first time and you don't have any child themes set up, you're gonna see this uh, real sort of basic page with one option to create a new child theme. Step two is to select your parent theme and you can see it defaults to the current theme which is 2016 and now we have this new analyze button step three and this is important because the vast majority of support requests that we receive have to do with variations in the way that themes are handling their style sheets and every commercial theme seems to want to do it differently typically the wordpress.org repository themes, the themes that are published on wordpress.org, follow basically the same pattern and they have the least amount of problems. Uh, they almost always work out of the box the first time, get very few support requests for those. Where we run into trouble are with third-party commercial themes that maybe change up the way that they handle the style sheet. So what we've done is we've created an analyzer that does a lot of the selection, setting selection for you. So we're gonna just click Analyze, and it's gonna do a check in the background and verify how it's set up, and then it's gonna come back with some information about that theme. And because this is 2016, it's a core theme, there's really no problems, no issues, it just comes back saying it's okay. And this is the normal behavior, this is the way it should be in the perfect world, everything's good and you can just proceed. So now it opens up a bunch of new steps. Step four, is to name your child theme directory. Now this is gonna be the directory that's created inside the themes folder for this particular new child theme. And you can change it to whatever you want. It just has to be unique to your site. And you know you can't have any crazy characters in there. But other than that, it can be pretty much whatever you want. Now understand that this is not the name of the theme. This is the name of the directory inside the folder. Okay, you can change the name of the theme later and I'll get to that in a second. Step five is select where you want to save new styles. Now we've added this new option for a separate style sheet. For now, we're just going to use the default, which is the primary style sheet, style CSS. That means it will write new styles that you create to the main style sheet. Step six is to select the parent theme style sheet handling option. Now this, on previous versions of Child Theme Configurator, we had a bunch of different options and a lot of people were confused by this. Uh, sometimes it didn't work correctly, sometimes it wasn't compatible with the theme you were using. So now what we've done is we've pretty much gotten rid of all those options and we're just giving you three. One is use the WordPress style queue, which is the preferred method, and let the child theme configurator figure it out. The second is to use the older sort of unsupported at import method. This was the method that was the de facto standard a while back. It's no longer recommended to use add import for a number of reasons, uh, which I won't go into here. And then the third option is to not do anything. Some themes are already set up to handle the, the style sheets automatically and you don't need to do anything. Uh, sometimes you want to do it yourself. Maybe you want to write your own actions. For whatever reason you don't want Child Theme Configurator to do anything, you can select this and it'll just leave that part out. And then we have additional handling options, which I'm going to leave unchecked for now. I'll go into more information about that later. Just leave that unchecked. Now, step seven. This is a big one. A lot of people had a hard time finding where to customize the child theme name. And so what we've done is we've broken this out into its own step and tried to make it really clear that this is where you can customize all this stuff. So you have the name, you have the theme website, author, author website, description, and tags, and the version number. So all this stuff is under step seven. If you want to change the name, change it here. So let's say you want to change it to my crazy child theme. You can do that. 
Otherwise, it's going to pull all of these header properties from the existing parent theme, which is something that it didn't do before either. So this becomes sort of a boilerplate from the existing theme that you can then customize yourself. Step eight, copy theme menus, widgets, and other customizer settings. Now this is really important to understand. Remember I showed you that on this uh, theme we've got it set up. To, it has its own menu already set up. It's got its own widget and sidebar. If I were to go ahead and set this up and create this child theme without copying those over, you would end up with a completely new theme with none of those options set. It would revert to the defaults, the menus would be the defaults, Some, most of the time it'll, they'll just be empty and you won't have any menus. So what we were getting is a lot of people wondering, hey, what happened to my menus? They're gone, it broke. Uh, it's, it's not that it's broken, it's that it creates all those menus, widgets, and other customizer settings uh, from the customizer for that particular theme. So the parent theme that you were using had its own set of widgets and menus and other stuff like that. So when you create a new child theme, those are all going to be blank. So in order to get them over from the existing theme that you've already set up, you have to check this box. And it'll just pull everything over automatically. It'll just work. And then lastly, create new child theme. Click that. It goes, does its thing. And you'll see this notice up at the top saying, my crazy child theme has been generated successfully. Always preview your child theme before you activate it. This is extremely important because sometimes when you create a child theme, the parent theme was not written in a way that supports child themes and sometimes it'll break. So to prevent a whole lot of heartburn, just click preview and that'll go over here to the preview section, uh, the live preview over in the customizer and you can verify that my crazy child theme works. Okay. If you don't see any errors, uh, problems here, it looks pretty much the way you want it to. You notice we've got our menu that came over right. We've got our widget, the search box that came over right. Everything looks good. So you can either activate it now or go back and you know make some changes. Now after you create your first child theme, you're going to notice now we have a bunch of tabs at the top here. Okay, these tabs are used for different activities in the child theme configurator. I'm going to go over the basics here. But before I do that, I want to run through some different child theme setups. I want to show you what happens when we create a child theme from some popular themes that are used. So we did 2016. Let's go down to, you can see I got a bunch here, responsive. This is a popular one. Create this. Now you're going to notice when this comes back, it says this theme does not require parent theme style CSS. That's because responsive was designed without using the style CSS for its styles. It actually loads the styles in, from separate style sheets, and that's perfectly normal. Previous versions of Child Theme Configurator didn't really take that into account. So now what happens is if it detects that it doesn't need to do any parent style sheet handling, it will automatically select do not add parent style sheet handling. This is a new feature. It's going to really hopefully help a lot of confusion. So now everything else is the same. Let's just go ahead and create a new one. So now we've got a new child theme for responsive. Again, preview this. Just make sure everything looks right. And you'll see now we've got responsive. Everything looks pretty much the same. Uh, the difference is now it's using sort of this default menu. This would be the default menu. It's not the same one that we saw before. So this theme is set up to automatically generate a menu and that's what you're going to see here. Everything else looks pretty good. Let's do another one. Right, create new child theme. Now let's go and let's do another popular theme that I get a lot of support requests for is Elegant Themes DB. This is a very popular theme. It's used all the time. I have a lot of people that use this and ask me questions about how to set it up. So we're going to do DV. We're going to analyze it. Now DV has its own set of issues. You'll notice that when it comes back, it's going to say this theme loads additional style sheets after the style CSS file. That's because DV is set up to load uh, the style sheet and then it loads some other style sheets. Now most of these are for things like short codes. Short codes are responsive. So you can make the decision to actually use a step, separate style sheet that loads after all that or just use the primary default. Everything looks good, it's green, it's check marks, everything's fine. We are gonna use the style queue for this and then create new child theme and preview. 
So now this is the preview of DV using the, a new child theme, DV child. So here's DV, everything looks good. Uh, you notice the menu is using the mobile version. If you want to see it in the regular version, just collapse this over here and it'll give you the right now. You can see I've got a gazillion pages in this menu. Um, we can fix that. The reason is because I'm using the test data for the beta test plugin and it has a bunch of pages already loaded and what DV is doing is it's cr automatically creating a menu of all those pages. So you see all these pages in the menu. So to fix that, what you need to do is go over to, in your customizer here, menus, and we're going to use the short menu. We're going to set that to be the primary. We're going to not do it on the footer and then save and activate. We've just activated DV and now it's using the short menu up here at the top. Okay. And now the DB child is our active, our active theme. And this is what happens when your theme is not written correctly to uh, use as a child theme. So we're going to go down here and we're going to find one of these. Here's one. It's Pro Blog Responsive WordPress Theme. Okay. We're going to analyze this one. Uh-oh. Okay, so what we have here is unexpected PHP output. We have loads of style sheets after the style queue. Number of issues. So my the point here is that uh, the new analyzer is going to be able to detect this stuff before you spend too much time uh, on your child theme trying to figure out why it's not working. And you can actually see the PHP errors um, there's a number of them here. Register st sidebar not called correctly, uh, out of date widget constructor, just a bunch of stuff. And what you can do is just highlight this, send this to the theme developer and tell them you ran into some problems. Another thing I want to show you is if you use an older theme, let's use one like 2010. Okay, 2010 was developed before a lot of these style sheet handling methods were really sort of mainstream, and it used uh, the older method of hard coding the style sheet link in the header template. And you'll notice if we analyze this, it's going to come back and it's going to say this theme loads the parent theme outside the WP styles queue. This is common with older themes back when using the at import to import the parent style sheet was sort of the normal way to do things with child themes. The new version, version child theme configurator 2.0 now lets you use this new repair header template in the child theme option. And what it'll do is it'll actually create a copy of the header and make the changes that it needs to make to kind of get it in line with the, the new way of doing things. Um, so you can do that and check repair header. It'll fix most things. It won't necessarily fix every single problem, but it's a good place to start, and if you run into problems, you can always, you know, send a report support request over to our website, uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. But anyway, if you create a new child theme, it'll come back. It'll say everything's good, child themes function correctly, uh, and now the style sheet is being loaded automatically. That's because we actually modify that header template so that it works correctly. Well, that's about it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, go to laleamedia.com slash contact. You can fill out our contact form, attach any screenshots that you may have, ask any questions, and we'll try to answer it as best we can. We look forward to hearing from you, and thanks for watching.